Just lately, I've been getting heaps of e-waste dropped off to the shop and it's starting to pile up. We need to deal with it. I've been away for a bit lately with farm trips and other things. So let's get into some of this stuff that's starting to pile up. Today's video is an induction cooktop. It's got a broken glass, so it's not repairable. I think it's an older model, but I believe there's quite a bit of copper in these. So let's pull it apart and see what we can get for scrap and see what other hardware we can get that's worthwhile and uh, get it out of my shed. So this is a Westinghouse cooktop, uh, induction cooktop, and it's got a cracked glass around here. I don't know why they crack. I've seen a few cracked, uh, whether something was dropped on it or whether it's a, a heat issue. I think they would be able to withstand the heat. Getting lots of reflections here, I'm sorry. Let's turn it over and uh, pull it apart. We should be able to get some good value from this, so let's not muck around and see if they're worth scrapping out. So they're not super heavy things. They're quite slimline. It looks like there's a panel on the back that probably comes off from screws around the side. Yes, it looks like there's torque screws, so they'll be the first things to remove. The panel is going to be just pressing steel, but uh, I'm curious to see how much copper wire we can get out of here. Okay, that's all the screws. Does it lift off? Oh, the whole thing. What's going on here? Oh, maybe I should have lifted the glass off the front from the other way. All right, let's turn it over. We don't want to break the glass any more than it already is. So the panel should come completely off, yep. So there's nothing much we can do with that glass panel. It'll have to go to landfill. Uh, I could probably put it in a box with e-waste because it was electrical, so um, and they'll deal with it wherever the transfer station takes the e-waste. Let's have a look inside. Okay, we have some sort of insulating cover. Oh, there's the copper. Look at that lovely copper copper disc. It's quite thick copper too, so I assume we're going to have four of those. Is this stuff going to be handy? It's like an insulating material. I wonder how brittle it is. Yeah, it's quite brittle. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if I need to keep that or not. And as for this stuff, it's like a really thick paper towel type foam stuff. So I don't see any use for that. It's quite brittle as well. So that'll probably have to go in the bin. So yes, we've got the same on each panel. Some nice copper. We'll see how easy that is to get off and hopefully it weighs a fair bit. And that's on an aluminium backing sheet, which looks like it'll come off clean. It's got some clips. Let's just chop the wires first. And what have we got here? Lots of... Oh, there we go. That just sticks on. Oh, that's the wire to the other end, of course. And we have some wires to the centre. I'm not sure what that does. It doesn't really move. That feels like aluminium. We'll check that in a minute. There's a little, looks like there's a diode in the middle. But really, we just need to get this copper. It's glued onto this back piece. That's a bit of a bugger. Hopefully it peels off easily. We might be, it might be easier to start from one end. It's quite thick copper. All right, I think we can Probably unwrap it that way, that way we're leaving. No, oh, it's still taking the glue off with it. I think we could still, yeah. We might have trouble getting it in with our number two copper because of all that glue on the back of it. And it's not gonna come off easily. Not sure. And whether it's worth unraveling it or peeling it off in a slab. Yeah, it's gonna come off like that but we have a lot of material on the back of it. 
Yeah, we'll have to look at that towards the end and see how well we can clean it up. It's going to weigh a fair bit though. And our sheet of aluminium is quite thick. And these are probably stainless steel clamps, clips. We'll check those with a magnet in a minute as well. So the clips are easy to get off. And we need to get this Ah, oh, they're not, that looks like it's ferrite. It's not a magnet, but it's not rubber. And it appears to be glued to the aluminium as well. I think we can bend the sheet a bit. And try and lever them off. Yeah, so it's lumps of ferrite. If we try the magnet... Yeah, so they can go in with their normal steel. Leaves a little bit of glue on the aluminium. I don't think that will be a problem, so we can still sell our al aluminium as clean. But we do need to get these ferrite pieces off. Yeah, they come off okay. It looks like bending the aluminium sheet's the easiest way. But the glue is pretty strong. Broke that one. All right, I'll clean the rest of these up and then we'll see what else we've got. We've got a big power board in here by the looks of it. So I've done two of these and I'm just doing a quick analysis as we go because I don't think it's worthwhile trying to salvage the copper, at least as clean copper, because there is very sticky silicon and glue. Well, it's not sticky to touch, but it just won't peel off. I don't think a yard, scrap yard is going to take that as number two copper. Even peeling it, unraveling it, it's almost, it's going to have to go as insulated copper wire, which downgrades the price from around $10 a kilo to down about four. So given that that's not going to be worth a great deal, the aluminium we got off it is very light. Obviously aluminium is, there's not much of it. Uh, these clips weren't stainless, they're actually magnetic, so they can just go in the shred. And those ferrite pieces, I must have got lucky on the first one because most of the others broke off. They really took some getting off here. They were very well glued. Those little pointers are aluminium. So let's do a, a little quick analysis here. Took me a while to get those two done. All I've done with these other ones is I've just clipped the wires and lifted them straight off. So a matter of seconds. I suspect they, we might be better economically selling those just as electric motors. It's only about a dollar a kilo, but it's a lot of effort to try and get clean copper off them, at least with this particular model. So let's do a few quick sums. We'll weigh up our copper on the scales, and we have 300 grams, so a little less than one third of a kilo. Uh, if we could get away with selling that as number two copper, we would be getting about $3 back. However, if it goes, and I wouldn't want to contaminate my load of number two copper, uh, I wouldn't want the whole lot downgraded because I had some of this stuff in, and the, some yards are pretty fussy with that. So let's say we sell it as insulated copper wire, which is about $4 a kilo, and we had a little under a third, so say about a dollar, a dollar twenty, something like that worth of copper, uh, insulated copper. Our aluminium weighs around about the same about 300 grams and that's only a bit over a dollar a kilo so say about 30 cents so we're at around about a dollar 50 after taking you know 15 minutes to try and clean them up as best we can the ferrite pieces and the little clips are really going to be a negligible amount so what a dollar 50 ish without being too accurate but if we just rip these straight off, take no time at all, put them on the scales, what do they weigh? Pretty well spot on a kilo, a whisker over a kilo. At a bit over a dollar, I think it's about a dollar ten at the moment, a kilo for electric motors. We're pretty much the same price, maybe a dollar twenty, maybe a dollar fifty. Not much difference a lot less work. So I've just convinced myself that I'm not going to pull these apart like I did with the first two. They're going straight in the electric motor bin. 
we can leave the clips on them we can leave that all just straight as they are i think the scrapyard would actually still like those in the electric motor bin because there's a fair bit of copper there but it saves a lot of time for me uh, some models of the induction cookers may be different and if you can peel the wire off without a lot of contamination by all means do it but i'm not going to muck around for only a few cents to try and strip them into separate amounts so that's interesting so whilst there is good copper in these induction cook cooktops it's a little difficult to get clean copper let's turn our attention back to the electronics we have there's another piece of ferrite there we have a control board and we have two large power boards a couple of fans they look like identical power boards now quite often when i'm scrapping things i will consider selling parts and if this was a tv with a cracked screen i would be able to establish if it goes and if it goes i would then confidently sell the power board as a as a spare board on ebay the control board i've done it before and i've done quite well i can't guarantee that these work just because it did have a cracked top it might have been a situation of um the electronics played up and someone was frustrated and slammed their saucepan down on the top and broke the top afterwards i can't guarantee that these work and i can't test them because i'm not sure how i would wire it up uh, it hasn't got the top on it anymore and the other thing is perhaps i could have tested it while it was still complete i don't even know the, where the wiring goes in uh, the other thing is there doesn't seem to be much of a market i have looked and there's whereas you search for power boards or, or logic boards from a tv and you find lots for sale and some do sell i didn't find any of the, that with these induction hobs probably because most handymen don't try and fix them it's probably more a specialist thing and it's quite possible that companies don't even aren't even interested in fixing them they just replace them so i'm not going to try and sell these boards for that reason but it's always worth considering parting something out Radio. well we've got let's take the boards out there's going to be a bit of wire we're going to get some coils uh, and transformers off these there's a big heat custom uh, sorry extruded aluminium heat sink there i'm not going to worry about any parts though i think we're just going to rip the boards out salvage the main scrap items and uh, the rest of it can probably go to e-waste uh, the power boards themselves aren't of real any real value other than the components on them and the control board here looks like it just clips in somehow uh, it may go as a mid-grade board it's got all these spring contacts on it i don't know how we'll go with those there we go no it's not good enough there's too much junk on it to sell as a mid-grade board there's only one two little chips uh, and i don't think there's any parts off that i really want these little uh, digital readout displays are pretty cool but i don't know that i'm ever going to use them and if i ever need some i'll just buy some uh, these springs are interesting the little touch switches but the springs don't remove easily so i'm not going to save them so they can just go in the e-waste bin so we'll rip the power boards out and really there's not much more to it Since we're not selling the boards, we can just chop the wires off. It saves unscrewing all the terminals. That one was loose anyway. Okay, the board's clipped in. There was a few screws. Get those clips out on that side. There we go it's quite a heavy board but that's probably mainly because of this big extruded aluminium heat sink we'll take those toroidal chokes off and that'll be a coil as a transformer there uh, there's not even any fuses on the board that i can see so not much really not much value at all i wonder if these things are relays all right we'll get the other one off first and we have i think it's a cooling fan here must come off from underneath there's our connector block for our power in okay we can probably just leave this all go 
to the shred as is. I'm just going to take this out to the transfer station. There's no more value in it for me. There's not even very much hardware. These plastic frames are only just put in with bent tabs of metal. So, and the fans, I'm not going to worry about the motor out of them. So that can just go straight to the transfer station as scrap steel. Or it could equally go in the e-waste bins because it still has electricals in it. So we might just do that. And then I can put the old boards and things that I don't want back in there. As well as any plugs and sockets and things that I chop off the wires. The last thing to do before we weigh up is just pinch any copper bearing items off the boards. And we just need a big screwdriver. I think it's pretty heavy duty copper wire. We might snip both ends on that one. That's all we need to do. So a nice copper spool there. Little transformer. And these are very thick wire too. If that's the case, you can normally normally clip them rather than destroy the circuit board with massive levering. And they all can go with electric motors. They weigh pretty well. That might do with the transformers. We'll just take the we'll take the um, MOSFETs and various other things off the heatsink. And the heatsink's attached to the board on the back. Wrong size. Should be all we need to do there. There's a nice hefty chunk of extruded aluminium. That weighs quite a bit actually. And that's all. That can go to the U-Waste transfer station. We'll do the other board, then we'll have a way up. The results are in and we'll get to them shortly. Let's have a look at what we've accumulated. We've got some insulated wire there. We've got the two extruded heat sinks, half a kilo there. Uh, we've got our transformers and these white ones were actually relays. So they'll have a spool of copper wire in them as well. So they can go as transformers. We've got our induction elements and then the ones that we decided, well, we tried to strip apart. Not much left on the board. I have a, had a good look over it because I do keep some parts. That's a bridge rectifier, but I have plenty at the moment. And I checked on online and they're really cheap to buy anyway. Same with these ICs or MOSFETs or whatever they are. I checked the model numbers to make sure they weren't expensive ones. A couple of dollars. Uh, so there's nothing I want on there. There's no fuse. I normally take the fuses unless it's in one of these. I think all these are capacitors. These big blue ones are actually capacitors as well. So no value on that board for me. So both of those boards can go to the transfer station as e-waste. Let's have a look at the notepad. A pretty dismal $4.70. Um, and I've included it all here as if I didn't pull apart those elements. Because as we saw earlier, the price wasn't a lot different and there was a lot more time. So as electric motors, about $2.30 probably a little bit more than that. It depends on the price at a given time. Transformers can also really go as electric motors um, and the extruded aluminium was that, that's quite good. The price is pretty good on aluminium at the moment. So there we go, not much return. Although you could whip through this pretty quickly and let's say you did four or five an hour and you quite enjoyed doing it. Well, yeah, it's perhaps not bad money, but you know, don't be lured in by that flashy looking copper. It's not as uh, lucrative as what it makes out. So there we go, guys. Experiment completed. I don't think I would pick up one of these induction cooktops if I saw one on hard rubbish or something. It is a bit of work to get into. There's not a lot of return. But if you like scrapping and you enjoy pulling things apart, you know, the return might not be that important for you. Alternatively, you might like to use these for some sort of craft work. They do look pretty cool and the copper does look nice. But uh, as far as return from copper and you might see youtube videos where you know it's saying free copper make a fortune uh i don't think so all right thanks for watching guys we've got it out of the shed i must get on to something else short on time lots to do catch you next time bye for now